I'm always looking on the wrong side. Good morning. This is Kenya with 40 Entrepreneur Drive. How's everybody doing this Friday morning? I believe it's March 15th. Let's see real quick. I can't check it. Happy March 15th. Uh, hope today finds you well. Today's video is going to be about advice that I could give myself if I could speak to my younger self. And I'm sure we all have advice that if we could go back in time and tell our younger selves, we would tell them so much, so much that we know now. How does the saying go? If I knew then what I know now? So yeah, hope you can see my face. Um, so the last couple of days, I've just been thinking over the talk that I had with Chris Brinkley, uh, from, uh, Driven Commerce, uh, Commerce, Commerce Driven, excuse me, uh, my consultation that I had about my websites. And I'm really, really glad that I, that he took the time out to talk to me. Uh, he went over a lot of technical not technical he went over a lot of business and technical stuff but really um, a lot of what his advice was really touched on a lot of my fears that I had as a young person that made me never want to go into business that I obviously still have now and so I'm gonna go over one two three four five six about six fears six fears about business and really six fears about being successful. So if I can go back in time and talk to my 20 year old self, or even go back 10 years ago and talk to my 30 year old self, these are the things that I would talk to myself about. So here's something you may not know about me. Um, I'm a pretty friendly and bubbly person and outgoing and I can be pretty hyper too. But I am an introvert, and I'm actually kind of have a very slight fear of people, which is really weird. <clears throat> really weird. You would never know it. Um, not an extreme fear of people, like a phobia, because if so, I wouldn't be able to come out and have a job, and I wouldn't be able to, you know, go shopping or things like that. So I don't have agoraphobia, and I don't have anything that actually is like debilitating but I have a generalized fear of people um, I, I got some trust issues and that's something that I would talk to my younger self about and just try to figure that out like what is it about people that you cannot trust or or feel comfortable comfortable about I think really it's just being comfortable in my own skin that's what it is I think when you're comfortable in your own skin and you feel that you can stand up for yourself and that you can trust yourself and that you can really, really believe in yourself, like there's so many cocky people that just have no fear and they're, they're, they're afraid of some things, but when it comes to dealing with other people, they have no problem being confrontational, they have no problem proving their point, they have no problem proving their right, and they have no problem, you know, taking chances and risks. So really, I think the fear of people that I have mostly is just a fear of being myself and being accepted for who I am. So those are some long-term issues that I'm dealing with. Um, so let's see, fear of not being, oh, I, there, I went right into the second one, fear of not being accepted. And this is all has to do with my business too, running a business. You cannot have low self-esteem and run a business. You just you just can't I can't I can't think of any business that you can run where having low self-esteem would not affect it so 40 years old and still dealing with some issues from my youth that just goes to show that you know as parents parents or older siblings or just uh, role models we have to try so hard to support and boost our our young people and let them know at a young age that they are they're fine just the way they are I mean 
I don't want to, I don't want to get cheesy here, but if anybody remembers Mr. Rogers, you know, the PBS uh, television show for kids, one of the things he used to always say, and it doesn't matter how you feel about Mr. Rogers, you can like him, you can not like him, you can think, oh, he's whatever, but one thing that I respect about the message that he had in his show was he was always telling kids, you are special just for being you. And I like you just the way you are. Can you imagine how how strong and confident young people would grow up to be if they were told that by their actual family members on a regular basis? Like by their, their peers and by their older siblings and by their parents and by their teachers and caregivers. If they were told that on a regular basis, you're special just the way you are. I like you just the way you are. You are a unique indi individual. And you're good, you're fine, you're okay, you're acceptable. And I'm not saying that I didn't have that in my youth. I'm not saying that nobody um, like put me down or you know misused me or abused me. But somewhere along the way, I didn't get that message. And uh, I think they say, what is it, like ages three to five or whatever, is when we really, is when our, our personality really develops, like the, the basis of our personality develops. So whatever happens in those first couple of years of life, it kind of sets the foundation for how you feel about yourself and how you relate to your surroundings. And then everything else growing up, it just adds to it. But um, some something about fear of being accepted. I, um, I feel like, I guess if I'm not acceptable, then maybe in some way, my business is not acceptable. So all the secret all the secretiveness and paranoia and not wanting to share. Part of it was like, oh, somebody's gonna steal my idea and do it better than me, basically. They're gonna steal my idea and run with it and I'm not gonna have a chance to, to, to develop my idea or my website. But a lot of it was just if I bring it out there into the world and I'm showing people, hey, this is me and this is what I'm doing. Maybe they won't accept it. Maybe they'll say, you know, what are you selling that for? Anybody can sell that or that's not good enough to sell. Or what makes you think you you can sell that? Or what makes you think somebody wants to buy it from you? So I would, I would talk to my younger self and say, you know what? Why can't you sell that? If not you, then who? If not, if they can do it, why can't you? Uh, I don't think there's anything special or particular about anybody that makes them able to do, able to run a business. Now, some people are just not business oriented and they don't want to run a business. Okay, we'll, we'll exclude those people. Some people might need a little mentorship, a little, uh, a little support, a little teaching and nudging. But really, anybody can run a business. If you have something to sell and you, ha and you have somebody that wants to buy it, with a little practice, anybody can do it. But I'm just kind of taking it to another level of, yeah, I can sell it, but whatever the fear is holding me back, like, well, yeah, they, they would want to buy this item, but just not from me. Like, if somebody wants to buy this candy bar, they might buy it from him, they might buy it from her, but they won't buy it from me. What, what is that? What is that fear? I don't know. All right, the third fear is... Uh, fear of not being good enough I said that part already not being good enough mm, I don't know I don't know I will go back in time and tell my younger self like Mr. Rogers said you're special just for being you and I like you just the way you are and you're good enough uh, fear being laughed at so I have been laughed at most of my childhood I'm a funny person I am I am kind of a funny person, but a lot of times I'm funny when I'm not trying to be. Like, sometimes I'm just being myself, and people will kind of laugh and, girl, you're so crazy, or, what? Who, who, who thinks of that? Why would you think of that? And it's playful laugh, like, it's just playful teasing, <sighs> you know, endearing type of teasing. But I've always taken that to, ever since I was younger, I've always taken that to be like, okay you you guys don't laugh at this person over here when they do something because I guess it's normal. You guys don't laugh at that person over there when they do something. I guess they're normal. But when I do something, 
it's different or weird or crazy. And so I've been laughed at a lot. Not in a bullying way, really. Just kind of, there's some unique, they are, there are some unique and I would say innovative thinkers. Like a lot of the life hacks and stuff that you see nowadays, a lot of the life hacks stuff that you could see like on YouTube, how to do this and how to do that. I'm like, I did that back in the day. And people laughed at me like, girl, you crazy. Why would you do that? You would do something like that. And it's really just innovation. And as an adult now, I come to see, oh, really? I was just ahead of my time. A, a real quick side story. So y'all know Erica Badu, the hip hop singer slash rapper artist. And when she first came out, she had her head wrapped up in like these African scarves or whatnot. That was the late 90s late 90s well in the early 90s mid 90s I was doing that like as a preteen teenager and I got laughed at and I got called Aunt Jemima and if you want to be African why don't you go back to Africa and stuff like that but then when the style came around nobody was laughing anymore it was like it was the thing to do and actually that style is coming back now 20 years later the girls are wearing the the scarves with the different designs the different ways to wrap it and I'm just like I did that and I got laughed at now it's normal I wore here's another quick story I wore some little cute little booties they were like leather booties they were my mom's they were suede I thought they were so sharp I never really had a lot of style growing up but I thought they were so sharp and so I borrowed my mom's leather booties and they had like little leather shoelaces instead of cloth shoelaces rope shoelaces and I wore them to school and I had a little cute outfit on I thought it was cute and these young stupid teenage boys called me like the lucky charms elf or something they were green they were green boots but they were leather I thought they were so smooth and they made fun of me and called me the lucky charms elf and what are you doing you gonna click your heels and make a wish uh, a couple weeks later one of the popular girls wore the exact same boots exact same boots Hers were burgundy, but if they were the exact same boots, the exact same brand. And uh, when she came in wearing them, they looked her up and down and like, oh, girl, you got it going on. You got it going on. I'm like, I just did that. I, I just did that. But because she was a popular girl and I wasn't, she, she gave it more credibility, I guess. Or she was an early day influencer, so she could get away with it, but I couldn't. So anyway, little stuff like that growing up made me feel like when I do something I get laughed at when someone else does something it's accepted and that when that happens enough as a young person that can affect your sense of your sense of who you are and what you're doing and if you're if you're good enough so being laughed at is not something that's always pleasant even when the person's laughing with you if you're a real fair if you are a real friend you'll be sensitive to your friend's needs and know that not all teasing is good but I digress um, so being fear fear of being laughed at as far as my business that's 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 a very small portion of why I don't talk to my co-workers about my ideas there are a select few people that I try to pick their brains as far as business advice and and um, being an entrepreneur and I'm very vague about it actually I never really reveal anything about myself but there's few people I talk to because I don't want to be belittled and I don't want to be laughed at and I don't want to be I don't want to have a sense of doubt instilled in me you know like well why would you do that and you know that's not a lot of money and why would you waste your time doing that but yeah I would tell my I would tell my younger self if I could go back in time when they laugh laugh with them and then laugh all the way to the bank because I mean I'm not saying I'm a genius or anything but time and time again the things that I've done that I have been criticized for or laughed at later on down the line it was acceptable it might have not have been accepted acceptable when I did it but it was acceptable so I just have to keep that in mind that if some people laugh because they don't understand some people laugh because they maybe are jealous some people laugh because they just don't accept it, and that's okay. You don't have to be accepted by everybody. Okay, fear of failure or fear of failing. And this, if you really peel back the layers, fear of failure is like an intangible thing. Like, what does that mean? What does that even mean? So if I fail, 
I'm taking it personally. If I fail, that means I didn't do something right. Maybe I'm incompetent. Maybe I'm not as smart as I thought. Maybe this was foolish a foolish idea to even think of to begin with. And it just goes down, down, down a rabbit hole. So fear of failing to me means fear of being a failure. And that's just not true. But you know what? Even if you are a failure, there's nothing wrong with being a failure at something. It doesn't mean you're a failure in life. It means you didn't complete the task. You didn't get 100%. You didn't, you know, succeed at that time. But really, how does the saying go? When you fail at something, you just really figured out one more way not to do it. And that's what I would tell my younger self. Like, okay, if you couldn't, if you couldn't, achieve your goal in this particular way then don't do it that way anymore do it another way try it and try it in different 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 kind of ways until you do succeed so that's just one that's one piece of advice for my younger self uh the last one is fear of change fear of change has had me by the (laughs) by the hand (laughs) for some years i don't like change I I don't like change. I don't like movie remakes. I don't like uh, rebranded items. I don't like new flavors of different things. I don't like, uh, what do they call them? Um, All new formula, all new flavor, new packaging. I like stuff just the way it is. If I like something, I like it the way it is. I don't want you to change it. I don't want want to bring on new cast members. (laughs) I don't want to have a new digital version of it. I just want the original. So I don't like change. That's something I do know about myself. I like I like the comfort of something being predictable. And just the way I was first introduced to it, that's the way I fell in love with it. And that's the way I want it to be. But life is full of change. Life is change. Change is life. Life is change. <clears throat> so I would tell my younger self, hey, get comfortable with being uncomfortable (laughs) because things are always going to change things are always going to throw you for a loop things are going to be unexpected sometimes slightly different completely different um, a new version of something and that's just something that needs to really be embraced Uh, and I need to learn to adapt learn how to adapt when I was talking about the, the Instagram that I signed up for Instagram. Now I signed up for Instagram before and I signed up for Snapchat just because my kids wanted me to. And I played around for a little bit just to just to be doing it. But there's just there's some things that I'm not comfortable using and be learning having the having the ability to adapt to new ideas and new changes and new technology is essential in business success in life success um there's a reason why we don't have horse and buggy anymore except for if you're amish but we don't use horse and buggy anymore because we found something better something more efficient we don't use uh certain types of motors in cars anymore cars have more technology nowadays because they're more efficient Uh, We don't write with the ink and quill anymore because we found out that a ballpoint pen and then gel pens and now even touch touch screens with the stylus, it's changed. It's it's, it's all about evolving and changing and growing and developing and progress. So my younger self, I would say, get used to the idea of change and learn how to change with it. All right, I'm going to finish up with something a little bit airy fairy. So I'm a Cancer, right? My zodiac sign. Not that I believe too much into it, but just for the sake of making a point, um, my sign is a Cancer, and there, and that's supposed to be a water sign, right? I'm very emotional. I, I have all, you know, I, I cry a lot. But not only that, Cancer sign and Pisces sign are water signs. And one thing about water is it conforms to whatever vessel that you put it in. You can put it in a jar, a flat pan, a tall, skinny glass, um, your mouth. <laughs> and as you're moving your mouth around, the water is going to conform to the inside of your mouth or the inside of that cup or the inside or the flatness of that pan. That water is always water. It's always water. It doesn't change. It doesn't stop being water even when it's ice. It's just solid water. It's called something different, but it's the same element, right? 
So maybe I need to take notes from the Zodiac and live up to my sign. Maybe not the moodiness part, you know, maybe not the emotional part. I got to get a hold of my emotions sometimes. But I think even Bruce Lee had a saying like that before. Bruce Lee had a quote about uh, a key to his either a key to kung fu or a key to success or a key to something is simply to become like water and water is soft but water can cut if you think about it used in the right way in the right form water can cut water can soothe water can massage if you've ever ever had a a water massage um, they have the laser cutters not laser cutters water cutters with the very high pressure um, holes that you can actually cut cut through rock with water um, if you have the grace and skill you can dive into water without having a splash but if you don't have the skill you can dive into water and belly flop and hurt I've belly flopped before and you can hurt so water has so many characteristics and it's so adaptable water is what I need to water is going to be like my my feng shui mascot for 2019 sometimes i need to be water sometimes i need to be ice sometimes i need to be mist sometimes i need to be hot water and scald somebody to get them the hell away from me sometimes i need to be cold as ice and not let things bother me sometimes i need to just flow and uh that would be the advice that i would give my younger self so yeah, um, a lot of what we talked about during the consultation, a lot of the things he was telling me as far as the different ways that I can implement marketing and advertising for my sites, because really, there's nothing wrong with my sites. It needs it need some design tweaking, but a lot of it was just sign up for Instagram, promote, promote yourself, um, talk about your brand on your YouTube channel, promote. And I was so afraid, like, well... Maybe these people on here can accept me for this talking head that's talking about business. But as long as I don't associate myself with what I'm actually doing, I don't have to be criticized for it. Man, business is all about criticism. Business is about taking risk. What, is it, what, what does the saying say? Uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Carpe diem. And so that's in this new chapter of my life, um, whereas the first 40 years, I'm all about not being non-confrontational which I still am a pretty non-confrontational person but there's nothing wrong with confronting fear there's nothing wrong with confronting a challenge so on this side of 40 I need to learn how to um, successfully confront issues I need to learn how to successfully adapt to situations I need to learn how to successfully promote myself and my brand because I am my brand. I am the face of my brand. My brand is a reflection of me. My sales techniques, uh, my, my, everything about my brand is, is basically a reflection of me because I need to believe in my brand. I need to know my brand. I need to be able to um, tell someone about my brand and let them know why they need it. And if I don't believe it, they're not gonna believe in it, right? All right, we are at the 23-minute mark. If you've been here this long, let me know with a like if you haven't left it already. Thank you for your subscription. Uh, Thank you for your new sub, or I invite you to become a subscriber so you can follow me and make sure you hit the bell notification so that when I drop a new video or if I'm ever on a live stream, you'll get the notification right away and you can jump right in and uh, join the conversation. Speaking of conversation, let me know what you think about um, this video. What would you tell your younger self if you could go back even five or ten years? It doesn't even have to be your youth, but if you can go back five to ten years, what would you tell yourself about fear? Yeah, your fears, basically, your fears. Because I think a lot of things that hold us back in life are, are all based around fear bad choices, bad relationships, bad job. It's because we were afraid to do something else, right? All right, let me get out of here. Time for me to head home. I like to chill anyways and just let the parking lot clear out. So I don't know. I might be using this 
this uh, these amenities uh, more frequently unless I'm not able to that way I can get my video out for the day and talk to you guys and then when I get home I can catch up and see what you guys are talking about all right thank you very much this has been Kenya with 40 entrepreneur drive advice to my younger self oh if I could find a time machine right all right talk to you guys later